who's ready to look at some third grade math curriculum. In this video, I'm going to be comparing Math UC Gamma to third grade math with confidence. Let's dive inside these two great math curriculums. All right, we're gonna begin with looking inside Math UC Gamma. These are the main pieces of the curriculum. We have an instructor's manual right here, a student workbook, nice and thick, as well as the teaching videos. We have the DVD, but those are probably more commonly used through streaming version nowadays. There is also a test booklet, which I could not find. This is a rather old, um, well-loved version, so you're going to see it's showing its age a little bit, but Gamma has stayed consistent and stayed the same. This is roughly the third grade level. Math UC does not label their math curriculum by grade, but this is probably pretty typically used around third grade. Gamma focuses on single and multiple digit multiplication. Now, there can be a bit of a misconception that that means all you are doing throughout the entire year of math is just multiplication. That is not true, and when you look at the student book, you're going to see that that's not the only thing you're doing. There is review of addition and subtraction. There's a little bit of work with fractions. There is other things going on in this, but uh, multiplication is the key focus for this year of math. I'll just give you a quick peek inside the instructor's guide. And you can see it is showing its age. We live in a very humid climate, so books kind of turn a little bit yellowed over time. Now, the way Matthew C. is set up is that it has 30 lessons, each of which might roughly last a week, a little bit more than a week. Um, that, that can vary a little bit. You can take your lesson, and at the end of the lesson, you can take your test. So you can see some of the topics, rectangles, factors, and products. So we're introducing multiplication right off the bat, looking at rectangles. We learned some of the easiest factors to multiply by, one, zeros, two, five, ten, toward the beginning, and you just go through and learn all your multiplication. Um, multiply by nine, six, seven, eight. Then we start learning multiple digit multiplication. We do learn rounding. We do a lot of practice with rounding some work with place value, there's some fractions in here, uh, some measurement work, prime numbers. Ooh, that's interesting. So you get that. And in the instructor's guide, there are some tips here on basically how to teach the lesson. Now remember, you're not pulling out this lesson guide every single day because one lesson is going to be used for a week or maybe a little bit more than a week. So you have one lesson with just some teaching tips you can have the lesson taught to your child through the video. But again, you're not pulling out videos every day because it's not a new concept being taught every day. So you are roughly working on one topic for roughly a week, and then there's incremental progress made with each of the 30 lessons. You're doing something slightly different and gradually progressing through there. There is an answer key in the back of the teacher's guide. Uh, which can speed things up if you don't feel like doing third grade math every day in your head. And then let's take a little bit of a look at the student workbook. Math UC student workbooks are very consistent. Uh, they have a consistent, very simple, minimalist style that they are known for and that can be very, very successful with many kids that could otherwise be distracted by too much going on on the page. The pages are not crammed full of a ton of work. They're very doable. In our experience, these lessons are short. They're easy to accomplish in a short amount of time. So here we're getting multiplication visually introduced. Matthew C. is famous for its blocks and its manipulatives. I will say in the gamma level, realistically, on a daily basis, you're typically not using the, manip the manipulatives anymore, the unit blocks. Uh, this is much more of just focusing on the page. They, they will have some instructions for you to build, but if you don't have the blocks, I don't think that it is necessarily essential. Um, but So you can do building for a child who needs to build out these rectangles and see it at work, but you also don't have to do the building. You can stick to the page if you, don't, if you haven't been using Matthew C since the beginning and don't have the manipulatives. So here's where it starts, and you can see, look, we've got some nice review of addition and subtraction right there. This is not just multiplication. 
So the way each lesson goes is that you have one, and it goes 1A, B, C, D, E, F, and all of those pages look pretty similar. And then we get to G, which I'm always excited to get to G because that's when you get to do something a little different. This is your application and enrichment lesson. And sometimes it's a color by number type of activity where you're solving problems and coloring it. There's dot to dots. There's interesting applied word problems. So I, I always appreciate the G pages. And after your child finishes G or they've done, they've mastered this lesson, when you think they've mastered this lesson, which you don't have to use every single review sheet if you don't want to or if your child doesn't need it, uh, then you can do the test if you'd like to complete the lesson. And the test looks exactly just like one of the lessons. It's formatted exactly the same way and just covers what the child was doing during that lesson. I'm going to skip forward to later in the book so you can see a lesson from roughly in the middle. So you can see, okay, ooh, we're doing a lot of four times tables here. Lesson practice. Then on the back, you can see what they're doing going through our four times tables, and we also have a few word problems. This is something I think Matthew C. does very well is word problems. They are consistently giving you a, just a couple word problems a day. Uh, I feel like they're very well written, and word problems do challenge the child a little bit more than they typically do with just seeing, you know, one times zero, one times one, nine times nine. That might be easy, but set it up in a problem that can challenge your child a little more. So I do think that solving word problems is very important. Having children read, figure out, picture what's going on in their mind and write down the equation, solve the problems is such great practice. You can also see because we're dealing with rectangles, we're dealing with uh, multiplication, they're also learning about area and they also do learn about perimeter. And so students will need to learn the difference between area and perimeter and the different ways to solve for those answers. Then let's go much later in the text to take a look at some of the last lessons. We've definitely leveled up the challenge a little bit. Here's our application and enrichment right here. We get a little bit of geometry, some work with shapes. Then here, oh, it looks like we're doing conversions. Maybe I should do a different lesson since conversions are kind of easy. Let's like, oh, yeah, see, let's look at that nice, challenging <laughs> multiplication problems with multiple digit multiplication. They have these columns in here to help the child because lining up the numbers correctly can be such a challenge. We also have, this is an application and enrichment problem. Ooh, ha, 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 we get a crossword puzzle. See, as you can tell, I enjoy these. Um, we get a crossword puzzle and here we're getting a little bit of vocabulary on measurements and money in here. We get our area, solving a more challenging area problem with multiple rectangles that will need to be added together. We have our multiple digit multiplication with those lines to help kids keep their numbers in order and they will have to be able to write fairly small to be able to fit the numbers in those lines. And that is a look at math you see. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. All right, now let's take a look at third grade math with confidence by Kate Snow. These are the key components of the curriculum. We have the instructor's guide, and then we have the student books part A as well as part B. They split the student book probably just to keep the student book at a more manageable size for your student. The instructor's book is just as thick as it is for all the grades. Math with Confidence is known for the hefty size of its instructor's guides. There are a couple of differences between the structure of third grade as compared to first grade or second grade. So I'll talk about that a little bit as we go through. You are going to need some additional supplies to complete this curriculum. There are a few manipulatives needed, mainly items needed for math games, such as a deck of cards uh, for playing some of the games or a dice or a couple of dice for playing games. Uh, some bingo counters or like um, something to mark where you are as you're playing the games. Those are the main things that I find us using the most. I think you can also use like a math clock where you can move the hands or some money, uh, play money at times. Um, but it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward math manipulatives as well. Math with Confidence is also known for introducing 
um, math picture books throughout the curriculum. In this level, you are suggested to read a math picture book at the end of every unit, and there are 16 units. I did not get all 16 picture books, but I did get a handful of them because this is a very enjoyable and enriching part of the curriculum for us. We really have enjoyed these math books, and all the ones I've had in the past, we have read not one time. We have read them dozens of times. So I got a remainder of one, follow the money. I was trying to get them in a couple different math topics, so fraction action, because we're covering fractions, Minnie's Diner, a multiplying menu, and the best of times. As you can see, these are all thrift books. <laughs> Usually you can find them pretty affordably on thrift books, and we have Roman numerals here. The main topics being covered within this year include multiplication. That's pretty standard. Multiplication tends to be the big deal in third grade. Division facts are also introduced in this third grade curriculum. So that is a difference with Matthew C because they do not introduce division during gamma. That is introduced in the next level of Matthew C. We are continuing to add and subtract numbers, only the numbers are getting bigger up until 10,000. We have area and perimeter, which as we saw is covered in Matthew C. Adding and subtracting fractions. There is some fractions, there's some equivalent fractions introduced in Matthew C gamma. I don't think they do as much work with fractions. We don't really get into adding and subtracting fractions in gamma. So we also get multi-step word problems, which Matthew C. does cover multi-step word problems, and money, elapsed time, length, weight, capacity, and geometry. Ma Matthew C. does incorporate these types of topics as well. Won't look exactly the same, but roughly similar. So there are some differences in the scope and sequence. Now let's take a look at what a lesson looks like. There are a few differences between third grade and second grade math with confidence. One is that the units are now arranged in 10 lesson units. So you're spending roughly two weeks on one unit now. So you have your 1.1 all the way up until 1.10 with 1.10 being the enrichment lesson where you have a book and an enrichment activity that you are doing. The lessons are structured very similarly with a warm-up activity and a learning activity, which a lot of times in this level, the learning activity is done together using something on the page. So right here at the beginning of the book, you are your lesson activities are related to this page. So we might have a game board. We have a game board on this page. Or you're introducing this number line and you're talking about Hey, do you remember how to do rounding <laughs> with your child as you go through this lesson activity? Significant difference is that in this level, some of the lessons, your student is going to have three pages. So this page is for le uh, lesson 1.1, 1.1, and 1.1. This was a three-page lesson. Quite a few of them are three-page lessons, but then some of them are only two-page lessons. So it's not like 100% of the time two pages, not 100% of the time three pages, you do have to keep a little bit of eye on that number up in the corner to say, okay, yep, this, uh, this lesson has that many pages. And it does tell you in the teacher's guide what pages you're doing, um, what problems you're expected to be doing. So, you, But just keep an eye on that. If you have a child who is racing ahead of you and doing their schoolwork on their own, tell them that, hey, you can look at your workbook and you can see what pages you need to do for the day by looking at the number up at the top. So this is how your lesson book is scheduled. You're usually practicing memory work at the beginning of the day or doing some sort of warm up. Typically two teaching activities where you're working together with your student and then your student has some independent practice and review at the end of the lesson. In the teacher's guide, there are also a number of black line masters at the end of the book. I did want to quick show you this because I thought that this is really useful. Here's a memory work black line master. So you can copy this or laminate it, put it in a plastic sleeve, because these are the things that your child needs to have mastered and memorized. And it's good to be able to reference. It's good to be able to drill. You will be prompted to drill and review memory work at the beginning of each lesson, which is a feature I really like because I don't tend to remember randomly to ask, hey, how many days are in a week? How many months are in a year? 
and kids do need repetition to master just this memory work. Hey, what do we call 12 p.m.? We call 12 p.m. noon. There's 30 minutes in half an hour. What's the name of a six-sided shape? Uh, so there's two pages on the memory work. Which one is perimeter? Which one is area? Which one is the numerator? Which one is the denominator? It's a really nice, handy little memory worksheet. I really like this as a nice factor that you can just have to go over quick reviews and they do prompt you. You're not reviewing everything every day, but they prompt you at the beginning of each lesson to, hey, review some of that memory work. Now I want to give you more of a peek inside the student workbook. So at the beginning, like with all math curriculums, pretty much you're reviewing uh, concepts from the previous year right here. So it starts off pretty easy. You can see it's colorful. This curriculum does tend to have games, so there will be game boards printed directly in the curriculum. I love that. It's not a separate file you need to print out. It's not a separate folder that you need to make. There are just games straight in here. So this, this is one of them. This is a leaf fight, and there will be instructions how to do the game in your lesson for the day. And the games tend to be similar and consistent, so if you have used this pretty regularly, um, they are not, they're not that difficult to do. And then here, there are word problems throughout this curriculum. I don't know how well you can see on the screen. There's this light graph printed below a word problem. So the graph is definitely helpful for young students as they're writing their own equations, keeping things neat and lined up. Here we have multiplication being introduced with cookies. Then um, arrays start being introduced and students get to draw arrays to match the equations. Here we have a little game board, multiplication crash. They give you instructions on exactly how to do this. So with these, you're typically using cards. So here you would be drawing a card from a deck of cards, multiplying by two, and you get to play bingo with your child. We have always really enjoyed the games. My son usually wants to play them more than once <laughs> if I have enough time. So there's a look at that. I'll show you um, book B just to, so you can see a little glimpse at how the challenge levels up. So here we're not having those grids for our word problems anymore. Here we're having our division. Ooh, big stuff starting to divide. We get some geometry here, learning about shapes. It's like we're right in the middle of a shapes type unit. I'm showing you. Ooh, that looks fun. Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Every time when my son loves to page through these workbooks and tell me about all the fun things we're gonna get to do in the future. We get a time unit, getting more detailed into time, schedules. All right, so that is your peek inside Math with Confidence. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I do have a lot of experience with both of these curriculums. Leave your questions, comments down in the comment section below. I'm always happy to nerd out with you guys over homeschool and definitely click the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel, seven and all, for more nerdy homeschool videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.